The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for um, your patience. We got a, started a little bit late today, but all's well. Um, my name is Rocio. I'm from SAGNI. Um, welcome to our uh, Regional Association webinar. Um, Today our presenter is Don Sanders from SellPromoProducts.com. He is uh, presenting on how to sell million dollar healthcare programs. Um, we will learn how to create big time profits from selling products suitable for the healthcare industry. Don, thank you so much for joining us once again. It's always a pleasure to have you on board. Well, thank you very much. Hi, well this is Don. I want to thank everybody for turning out today and the webinar I'm going to do is selling million dollar healthcare programs and the reason that I came up with this idea is the healthcare market is probably, or I know it's the largest buyer for promotional products, so I'm going to try and give you some ideas on how to break into that market and profit from it instead of sitting on the sidelines. And quickly I'll just tell you who I am. I've been a distributor forever, a really long time. I started doing this back uh, in the 80s when no one would give me a job just selling part-time for a distributor that was here in Dallas. And I never intended to be in this business, but I just couldn't find anything that I really liked to do, so I just kept doing it. And from that day till today, I don't know how much promotional products are sold or what volume, but I would say it's 25, 24 million. But the thing that is most important to me about that is I actually did this to make money. I didn't give my products away. I think that our profit margin on our orders is around 43%. I am still a distributor. I just don't sell as much as I used to. For 96 months in a row, and uh, from I'd say 1994 to 2002, my ex-wife, myself, and three students from SMU sold about $100,000 a month. I'm not making that up. I just did this right. We were not hobbyists. I took this seriously. I spent money on marketing, mailing programs, and I did what I needed to do. I'm also a speaker at shows, but I primarily run the website sellpromoproducts.com, which is a free training site to anybody in the industry. But I still sell orders, just not as much as I used to. So with that said, here's an old ad for this webinar, which I did myself back in August. The only reason that I'm showing you this is these are the things that I'm going to try and show you about today about learning about finding wellness program buyers, using social media to broaden your healthcare sales, how to create testimonial marketing, how to close your sales by email, products that sell regardless of price, how to do wellness mailing campaigns, how to overcome objections, discovering all of your alternative healthcare buyers, and how to develop wellness incentive drives. Now, first thing I want to go into, it has nothing to do with healthcare, it has to do with the election. The way that you're going to be successful selling healthcare programs is you've got to forget about the elections and the talk that is centered around uh, the Affordable Care Act, whether it's going to stay or whether it's going to go, et cetera, et cetera. You've got to go into this with the idea that it doesn't matter to you who was elected president. I did vote for somebody, but I did not make my vote based being all in, where if that person didn't win, my business was going to flounder. So what I'm telling you is please forget the election because we do not know exactly what's going to happen. And if you try and forecast that and put yourself in a position where that information or who was elected is going to affect you, you will fail. So don't let politics fit into what you do. And the only reason I'm saying this is it means so much to me. I have a lot of friends of mine that just haven't gotten over the election and they just go on and on at Facebook. But I have never run my business depending on who is going to be elected. I try to make my business election proof. So if you'll do that, you'll go a long way to building up healthcare buyers. Now, here's a list of the top industries or buyers of promotional products. Uh, I've got healthcare as the top buyer, education second, financial third, manufacturing fourth, technology fifth. And the other ones are up on the board as far as automotive, nonprofit, hospitality, etc. The reason I'm showing you this slide is the opportunity for sales are so great in the healthcare market, and that is where you should spend most of your focus, or at least focus some of your time, on selling the healthcare market because the healthcare market is huge. There are a lot of entities that deal in this industry. 
I've included a slide right now of industry facts on the top states which have the most healthcare companies, which is California's first, Texas, New York, Florida, Pennsylvania. Since most of y'all are in New York and New Jersey, New Jersey and New York are on this list, as is the state that I am from is Texas. That is a lot of customers for you to be calling on. So start thinking about selling healthcare programs and how that is going to make things better for you. Now, a lot of people ask me, Don, where do your customers come from? Same way with my healthcare customers. This is where my healthcare customers and the majority of some of my larger customers come from. They don't go come from magic calling patterns or me being smarter than anybody else or trying to get out and say that I sell cheaper or I'm brighter, et cetera, et cetera. Most of my business or nearly all of my business comes from referrals and personal relationships. The reason I'm bringing this up is the next part of this webinar, I'm going to show you how to be personal with people. It works for me. It'll work for you because, after all, we want to buy from people that we like. The Bombay Company was the largest account that I had. They had 455 retail stores in America at one time. They bought about $230,000 worth of promotional products from me a year. I got that business because of a friend of mine's wife did business with Bombay. La Madeleine was a French bakery that I started dealing with with one location. When I finished dealing with them, they had 78. I did a lot of programs for them. I got that business because of a friend of mine's girlfriend that was a marketing director for La Madeleine. Harris Hospital Health System was a schoolmate of mine. I went to junior high, I went to elementary school, high school with Randy Stone, and I even went on to TCU with him. That was my second biggest buyer that's a healthcare buyer, was a schoolmate friend of mine. Baylor Home Care, Baylor Healthcare System, which has probably 20 hospitals down here. I met that, in, that person at a chamber function. Now, that's someone that I didn't meet because of a personal relationship, but I built that account into the volume that it was by being personally and getting to know that person as someone that I classified as a friend. Now, to sell these big healthcare buyers, you've got to build a strong brand presence. That means you've got to make yourself different. You can't be the person who has on the back of their card, I have the lowest prices in town, or call me for the best deal, or a lot of distributors say, I have thousands of products to choose from. I don't pitch myself that way. I have a unique logo. I brand myself with shoes. You'll see those four pairs of shoes on that card. I guarantee you, you know which one I wear, and I point out to people that I am different, I am unique, and this is probably the tenth incarnation of my brand during the time that I've been doing that. I don't keep a brand for long. I change it quite frequently so I can stay in touch with people and show that I am rebranding to make myself unique and in, well, it, I know what's going on at the time. So creating branding, you can do this by six ways. Price, service, reliability, personality, being creative, or doing custom jobs. I do a little bit of all of this, but I don't deal with price. We don't sell on price. We sell at a certain price. You either want to buy from us or you don't. I look for people that value service and reliability willing to pay that price. But the thing that I focus on mostly is personality. I show people exactly who I am because I want them to share who they are with me. Now, there's six photos on the screen right now. There I am. I went to Havana. I went to Cuba last summer. Up there at the top left, I'm with a slick-looking Cuban guy in a 1956 Oldsmobile convertible. I shared that photo on Facebook. I got three orders from people coming back to me and saying, Don, why in the heck did you go to Cuba? Well, that was the connection that I was looking for. I was a contestant on The Price is Right in 2001. There I am at the bottom of the screen with Rod Roddy. That picture got in the Dallas Morning News, and I sold business off of that because people thought, Don, how in the heck did you get on The Price is Right? Betty and Gracie down there at the bottom right screen are my dogs, my two sister dogs that are 10 years old. Those dogs have sold me more promotional products than any other thing I have. Of y'all, the people that are on the webinar today, who doesn't like dogs or cats? I'm sure most of you have pets. If I can get you to chatting about your dogs and cats, I've got you sold. Now, here's a photograph of me way long ago. My mother used to take me to Leonard Brothers Department Store every year for the holidays, and he had, or I had my picture made with Santa. 
somehow I hung on to these pictures. Instead of putting these in a drawer, three years ago, this was my holiday card. <clears throat> I made a holiday card up with that picture of me with Santa. I sent it out, excuse me, <clears throat> I sent it out to my customer, and you would not believe. 50% of the people that I sent that out to emailed me or called me and said, Don, where in the heck did you get that coat? Or we never knew you had any hair. Exactly what I'm looking for from people. I'm looking for a personal touch. Now, Another thing to do to build branding and to sell these big healthcare buyers is you can't use regular business cards. I haven't had a regular business card in more than 20 years and will never have one again. I don't sell printing. I can't make any money on printing. I sell promotional products. So my cards are promotional products that I get to sell promotion orders from suppliers that I deal with. One of the best ones I've ever used are my lens cleaning cloths from Cloth Promotions. I love that supplier. I change these all the time. There's my shoe logo on it. Anytime that I meet a healthcare buyer or anybody in that industry, I would pull out my lens cleaning cloth, introduce myself. I would get their glasses or their cell phone, wipe their screen off, fold that back up in the pouch, and just turn around and ask them, why don't we do a couple of hundred of these with your logo on it? I sold 21 orders in the last two years by doing that. Let's just get right to the point. I want to make a sale to you, and I'm going to try and do it on the spot. Here's another cloth that I just used this year. is my holiday cards, more Santa pictures, but what I did with this to be unique, same thing you can do with healthcare buyers, is I folded those up and I put those in holiday cards. I got these from Warwick. It's a great supplier. I'm not pitching Warwick. But I had a normal holiday card that said "Best or Happy Holidays, Don Sanders on the inside. But when you open the card up, those two uh, lens cleaning cloths you're seeing there, the one at the bottom was this year's, the one at the top was the year before, that fell out into people's lap. What a dramatic holiday greeting. I even timed this to send it out first week in December. So some of my customers who got it might think, you know what, we need to buy some holiday cards. And I ended up selling four orders of Warwick cards from people because I sent that in a timely manner and I sold several orders of lens cleaning cloths. I also have lens, I have a mini jotters from Warwick. They're little pads with rule lined paper on them. There's my logo on the front, same kind of pitch. I meet somebody at a chamber function, a healthcare buyer. I pull this out, I write a note on the inside flap, I hand it back to them, and I just kindly say, why don't we do a hundred of these with your logo? Get right to the point. The reason I do that is I qualify people. If somebody's not going to be a buyer for me or say, you know, we're not done, we're happy with who we buy from, I just say, fine, it was nice to meet you. I don't try and continue to talk to them, say I'll give you a cheaper price or whatever it is. I just move on to another prospect. Here's another card that I have. It is a Coaster Stone self-absorbent car coaster. Just got these. I guarantee you, you've never given away car coasters as a business card. I take these to events. I take them with me. I rip out one of these. Who doesn't want to have one of these in their uh, cup holder in their car? It's a great little item. I'm not pushing these products on it. I'm just showing you what I use and what I would use to get to these big buyers. I stay connected on Facebook, my uh, Twitter account, Instagram, things like that, those kind of sites, mainly on Facebook by posting pictures that I showed you before. I'm looking for connections with people. I look at what's on their Facebook page. I make comments about, well, did you enjoy your trip? Did you do this? Did you do that? I get more orders by being that way than I do being price conscious. Now, here's a picture of Betty and Gracie, my dogs. I went down and called on the Hyatt uh, Hotel in downtown Dallas four years ago. They were changing marketing directors. I chatted up the lady that I made the pitch on. She would called in four other suppliers. I made as good a pitch as they did, but the next day or that afternoon, I sent her a thank you email. That's exactly the email that I sent her. Nothing business-like, just Betty and Gracie in my card, and the next day, I got back that email. The only reason I'm showing you this is I connected with that person over dogs. As soon as I read that email that she told me she had puppies, then she goes into about her samples, her boss, etc. I knew that I had outsold the four other or three other distributors that I had gone up against. The only reason I'm showing you this, that's how this works. Same thing with another one. Here's somebody I sent the holiday card for. 
sent me an email back thanking me for it and wanting to order them for their company. Now, I want to talk to you about importing. You can't make money if you lose money first. Don't be an importer on your own. I know a lot of distributors get kind of greedy and they think, oh my goodness, I don't need suppliers to do these orders for me. I can do them myself. I'm not going to go through the horror stories that I know of people that have lost their deposits. <clears throat> their shipments have not come in because of problems with importing. Never import on your own. Buy from reliable suppliers. Now, I know you all get emails like this. I promise we'll be finished with this part of the webinar in a minute, but do not respond to these emails requesting all of these big orders. These are scam emails. The only reason I'm telling you this, don't want you to lose money. You can't make money if you start out losing money. What happens with this is this guy will email you. You get chummy with him. He'll give you a credit card for 2,000 units. That credit card will be good. You've got that money in the bank. You make $2 a piece off of those flash drives. You make four grand and as happy as you are, can, and you will be until you get your credit card statement. You open up that statement. The charge was denied. What happened is Mark Terry here used a stolen credit card to buy those flash drives for you. You go after him. That phone number is disconnected. He's gone at M. Terry, Boone Enterprises, whatever it is, and you're out the money. Never respond to these things, just delete them. I know a lot of distributors respond to these. I used to get one a week. Now I get about five of these a day. Now, if you're going to sell big health care buyers, you've got to limit choices. A lot of distributors give, just give their customers way too many choices. They don't know which way they're going. They don't keep it simple, which is what you've got to do. It's like this lady in the grocery store trying to buy some salad dressing. How could you ever pick out which brand you wanted? Way too many choices. Don't do that to your customers. When anybody wants to buy some from you, limit the choices to three. My line is a good supplier that makes kitchen products. Let's say that you were doing a healthy eating program for a health care provider. Somebody says, well, Don, I want to spend three dollars or less a piece on these products. Well, all three of these products are three dollars or less, so I know that. I will come at that customer with these three wanting to see if I can get them to bite on one of them. If I don't, I come back with three more, but don't give people too many choices. That's a mistake. You'll never close them if you confuse them. Now, you've got to build your image if you're going to go after these big healthcare buyers. I do testimonial marketing sheets. Our testimonial marketing sheets, emails, etc. What you're seeing here is one that I've done printed and that I also email to people. You're looking up there at Luann Smith at Doctors Hospital. Big health care account of mine. I done I did business with her for eleven years. I took her quote and would use that to go after my health care buyers. I email these to people. I also carry them with them and hand them to people so they know, hand them to prospects so they know I'm legitimate, makes me feel better about myself because I know that I deal with reliable people. Now, to contact healthcare buyers, you've got to create lists. You've got to get lists of people that you do not people, entities you want to go out and call on. You've got to put them in groups. You've got to group them up in hospitals, retirement centers, assisted living centers, medical equipment companies, home nursing associations, you name it. Create lists and create groups. But before you do that, I want you to understand that all products are not the same. A lot of distributors get confused. Let's take the example of bottled water. A lot of the bottled water companies use sewer water, which you're seeing down there at the bottom. That is, re that is a water treatment plant. Their bottled water comes from that water treatment plant. All the minerals are stripped out. And it is bottled water, but to me it's not very good bottled water. We're above that. That is the spring in Mount Ida, Arkansas. Alexa Springs is up there. I went up to visit and saw how they bottle their water. Their water is real spring water. I'm not pushing their water. I'm just telling you, you get caught on a bid or a job and somebody says, well, I can get it cheaper. Well, maybe they did, but was it the same product that you were offering? Was it spring water or was it city water? Was the power bank that you lost the deal on? Was the battery as good an amp as the one you pitched? Don't get bummed out by people that say, oh, I can get it cheaper. Ask them some questions if they care about quality, because they should when they're dealing with their customers. Don't lose orders over that. You cannot sell million-dollar health programs by yourself. It's impossible to do the volume that, you, that I sold by myself. I had three people working in our office every day. 
making phone calls, doing mailing programs for me, finding out who we needed to call on. They were students that I hired from local high schools and from SMU, the college that was across the street from us. Now you want to really step out and start looking for big healthcare buyers, you've got to do a mailing card program. I lost my biggest customer in 1995 was at Alice Times Herald, or they were my second biggest customer, Bombay was first, and they went out of business because the Herald was bought by the Morning News. I lost $175,000 a year account in one day. That paper shut down, the assets were bought out by the Morning News. I almost had a heart attack, so I designed a program, a self-card mailer program where I mailed a card, in this instance, was a uh, card offering a scissor box with a pair of Fister scissors. Return the card, I give you this gift. In one year, I got 21 customers back who were doing eight to $10,000 for me. I got all my eggs out of my one basket. I'm sitting here trying to tell you that I know what I'm doing. Well, I had a lot of my eggs in one basket, taught me a good lesson. I used a card program to correct that. Now, where are you gonna find those students? Card programs and contacting these big care about colleges and high schools. You can use seniors at high school. They're readily available. Now you can fill these out online. Look for a marketing assistant. Pay them 15 bucks cash an hour. You'll get all kinds of good help. They need to put things on their resumes of working for marketing companies. I've had the best students in the world work for me a year or two. High quality workers, enthusiastic, no excuses. That's what you've got to find to improve your business. Now on the card program, find a hot product right now that somebody wants. This is an old card when USB memory pins came out. This is what, eight, seven, eight years ago? But this fellow right here, this distributor, I helped him design a card and he offered a USB memory pin. Sent that out to different prospects. If you send it back to world-class promotions, you got a memory pin. He got a 9% return on this. He wouldn't go just give the pin to them. He'd show up and try and pitch them and tell them about himself. Get a hot product, offer it, and you'll get back responses. Right now, a nice power bank. Sunjoy did this little flyer for me, which has my logo on it, which I send out to people as a little marketing piece, but a slick power bank would be somebody at a healthcare at a hospital, a personnel director, marketing, materials management, the people that you want to call on. They'll respond wanting these power banks. How about a Bluetooth speaker like up there at the top? Or a 3D headset. Who doesn't want one of those? You want to get a high response rate? Offer cool tech products. Now, I don't waste time. I don't worry about propositions. Uh, California Proposition 65, There's a, I don't know how many of these regulations there are, I don't fool with this stuff. I don't go to seminars, I don't pay attention to it. The reason I don't have to is I use suppliers that have already figured this out for me. I buy from suppliers that already figured out, the, I've already figured out the regulations. It's their problem to deal with this, not me. It's not that I'm not concerned about it. It's just I don't fret about it. I spend my time calling on people. I do not buy lists. Don't ever buy a list when you do mailing programs. You buy a list, 90% of the, not 90%, 30% of the information is inaccurate. You've got to create your own list. Have those students call hospitals. Have them call retirement homes. Find out who the mailing director, not the marketing director is. Find out who buys the promotional products and mail those cards to them. Now let's talk about specifically about healthcare buyers. The marketing and human resources are going to be the departments you're going to call on. Also materials management and nurse recruiting. You're going to print flyers. I'm going to show you those in a minute. You're going to mail that flyer with a certain sample for three weeks before you do anything. You just repetitively mail them the same sample, the same flyer, and on the fourth week, have your marketing student call and try and get you an appointment with that company. If they don't respond, mail them again, call them again. If they don't, email them the images, phone and mail. If you don't get them, just move on to somebody else. Now here's an example of a flyer Quickie just did for me on variable data mining. Now large companies, that would be hospitals and healthcare providers in particular, are looking for information, medical habits, and how people are, are their buying habits. This is a little thing that Quickie's come out. You mail a sheet like this with a specific product offering to help a hospital with variable data mining, 
They're going to know what you're, that you know what you're talking about. You're not the average promotional products people, person trying to sell a 99 cent mug. You're trying to help them in business. Here's another piece that I've done. I mail my lens cleaning cloth with a flyer. You're seeing that flyer right there on the screen with my logo on it. Repetitive mailing, flyer, card, then call. Works like a charm. Here's one from Coaster Stone. Same flyer with my logo on it. I would mail that flyer and a sample of a Coaster Stone coaster three weeks in a row. These suppliers, if you want to email me after the presentation, I can help you get these sheets made up. Suppliers will do them for you. This is the only way that I know to get attention to these big buyers. Here's one that Warwick did for me. Don't wait around if you don't have a logo. You'll say, sure, Don, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to wait till I get a logo like you have. Well, don't do that. This one has straight line type. Don Sanders Marketing, my email address, and my phone number down there. Warwick will make those things, those for you, create the art, send you the image, you burn it on a disk, go run the copies and start mailing them out. Here's another one with Quickie, which is specific to healthcare markets. Those are Quickie healthcare products. I have that with my logo on it. Same thing, send that flyer with that little key tag. Devara makes antimicrobial badge reels. Now, I'm not pitching Devara. This is a flyer they made for me on badge reels, reels that propel or repel germs. Every hospital has name badge, every, badges. Every healthcare provider has these badges, but I guarantee you maybe 20% of them have antimicrobial microbial position badge, badge reels. You get samples of this product, you mail it to a hospital, they maybe have never seen these before. Here's something GMG did for me. Got my logo up there. This is a healthcare pitch that I made to sell highlighters to healthcare systems. Same product, mail product, mail flyer. Here's one, Raining Rose is done for me on an EOS vanilla bean lip balm. People love this lip balm. You send a sample of that with that flyer, you're going to get somebody's attention because everybody loves that lip balm. Now here's two Claggin for me. These are silly little tech products. I'm, 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 I'm not pitching these on, on you. I'm trying to show you the different flyers I've got to support. And these are two little tech products that people in hospitals would like to have. Like those little charging cables or these little wind-up bots. How cool are these? Mail them with the product and the flyer. Here's a Coaster Stone idea book. This thing is broken down to 21 different industries that you sell to. One is wellness and healthcare. Send that book with a coaster in it right in that wellness section. Customer will get it. What they need to do with the coaster. Now, here's a pitch that I made to follow up when I'm when I did the antimicrobial edge reel. There is an email that I create. I get responses of people who wanted this sample. Made this set myself on a PowerPoint slide. Here's one I made for keeping nurses, ha nurses safe, safe. This is a security whistle that will blow, and I am telling you, it's the loudest thing in the world. Great thing for nurse recruiters in hospitals to keep them safe. If they're in a parking garage at night and they feel danger, you blow that thing, it'll scare who's ever threatening you literally to death. Great little item. Now let's talk about the Affordable Care Act with the election the way it is. No telling what's going to happen with this. But one thing I do know is health care is going to go through changes, and you need to be up with that because understanding the Affordable Care Act, understanding the changes are going to mean that you're going to be able to act like an expert with your customers. Here's a fact. 82% of business owners expect, and I guarantee you, your health care premiums have gone up. This is a fact. 40% of those owners have an understanding of the Affordable Care Act. That means 58% do not. That means there's 58% of them you can go educate. 95% of companies plan to offer a health care improvement program, and nearly all of them are going to expand that to three to five years. I don't care what changes the current or the new administration is going to make on this. Companies are still going to be using wellness programs to cut health care costs. Now I got this figure right here from an ASI seminar that I did. This is there. I got this. Uh, I guess this statement from them, I'm not taking care any for it, but for every dollar spent on wellness programs, on promotional products, there's a $3.27 return. If I read that back 
right, that's a 327% return people get on promotional products that they buy. You go talk to somebody and say, I can give you 327% return on your money, I guarantee you they're going to talk to you. Now, office exercise programs, here's a coupon program that I've done for several healthcare providers. There are coupons printed up, given to all employees, they get a free lunch if they come to an exercise day, they can redeem their coupon for a free bag. It right there on the screen. You get a free lunch, you get 30 minutes off of work. A lot of people don't like to exercise, that might not be free time, but it's good for you and you get a free backpack. It's an incentive to participate in an office expert, office exercise program. Here's a stop smoking program. Same kind of pitch, stop smoking for a month, get a tote bag, use that coupon to get in for that tote bag. Here's another one where you get a choice of three items, you get coupons, for not being sick or not having taking sick days at a certain period of time, you collect those and you trade those for prizes. These can be done from a, a level one prize up to a level eight prize, which might be a $300 jacket. A level two prize might be a t-shirt. A level three might be a cooler. I've done a lot of these programs. I'm happy to get on show these to your customers, those prospects they're going to be interested. Here's a wellness program magnet. Put the logo up there for your customer where that little heart is. Great little product to introduce wellness programs to people. Here's one with 10 other wellness uh, tips on it, which are showing you how to change your mindset, how to manage stress. Great little giveaway to all employees to knock off or to start that program. Now, back in the day when we sold big healthcare buyers, I did name badges for three major hospitals here. And the reason that I love to do that is the repeat orders on these were absolutely amazing. I was selling three or four thousand badges at a time, and then the hospitals would have to reorder. The turnover in hospitals is high. That's great. I like high turnover. That means they have to buy new badges. Because when they put somebody's name on it and they leave, that badge is worthless. So they got to buy a new badge. I did a lot of business. You're going to sell million dollar healthcare programs. You're going to have to be a name badge expert. Now, I use ID Line, a great company. The only reason I mentioned them, these are their images that I got from them. If I was going to if I was going to go after a name badge program at a big hospital, you're going to have to act knowledgeable. I would go with those. Badger tractors, but then I would come back to the badges. These are a little flyer that ID Line made up for me. There's my logo again. That could be mailed with the badge repetitively and then make the call. But you've got to strive to sell the name badges. And the cool thing about ID Line is they have a badge release program. You sell a hospital 2,000 badges, you bill them up front. Let's say they take delivery for 1,100 immediately, they have 900 in stock. They email you the names of the people that they want to add to it. You go to a URL, which is created by ID Line. You enter the order electronically. The badges are pulled and run and mailed directly to the customer. You don't have to do anything beyond that point. This is the way to sell name badge programs. Here's ID badges. I'm, and now I'm just going to try to give you some products that I think are cool. Identification badges are a big thing in hospitals for visitors. For anybody who goes into exercise programs there, ID badges are bought by personnel or materials management. Now, I've sold a lot of stuff to assisted living and retirement communities, which are all part of healthcare. I had a, a company that owned 10 uh, retirement homes. I did business with six of them. A really neat thing I did for them were custom playing cards. Front of the cards had the retirement homes logo on them. Each card had a different phrase, all 52 cards. One had an exercising tip, another one had an eating tip, another one had a safety tip. When they played bridge, and people play bridge as retirement homes, they were reminded of what they needed to do to be healthy. <clears throat> you go show this to a retirement home, they're going to think what a neat thing that is. Mats are a big seller at healthcare programs. At hospitals, they've had a lot of mats. They have to have mats just for safety reasons. Another, materials management, personnel would buy these, go 
start selling mats. I guarantee you, the person at that hospital hadn't heard from a mat salesman in a long time. There's your three prospects, materials management, personnel, marketing, six other more uh, mat samples. Here's one specifically I did for autumn leaves of White Rock Lake. This was at the front door of the retirement center, and then they even bought them for the fronts of the elevators and the interior of the elevators. So when people walked in in a walker, it was not slick on the elevator floor. The walker would hold to the mat. I guarantee you haven't thought of that. That's a safety issue of selling mats. Here's a little lens cleaning cloth that I did for cloth promotions for Parkwood. She will be able to show uh, the different pictures of her properties. There are three photographs of Parkwood. These were given to people when they came in and looked at a unit for their parents. Most people looking for a retirement home living are the children of their parents or their grandchildren. And this is a cool little item that was given to them to get them to come back. Cause marketing is a big deal. Pink products. Here's a little cancer awareness information. You need to be selling these to keep current. Quickie has a Teladoc program. There are little key tags. <coughs> Excuse me, just like the ones you get at the grocery store about calling a doctor or visiting online. Very cool thing. Table covers are a big item for health fairs. Snug Z makes Zen products. You know, it's a really neat little healthcare item. Zen infusers are neat. I bet you don't think about healthcare problems, but safety is a big healthcare issue. Want to keep from getting hit by a car tonight, walking a dog? Use reflective products. Sell safety programs as part of health care incentives. And children's hospitals are a big, big buyer of products. There's all kinds of cool things. Here are two little key tags that Quickie's done, which I just think are so cute. Neat little thing to give to kids, put on a key ring for a, 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 a or put on their on their backpack. There's just a thousand different items you do these hospitals. Now, I want to thank everybody for listening today. I, have, I wanted to leave some time for questions. If there were any questions, here is how to get a hold of me. There's my cell phone. There's my email, my website. If I can ever help you, let me know. And what I want to stress on you is with the healthcare market being the biggest market, I think you need to focus on that, spend some time with it, because I think there's great potential there. But you're you're not going to be able to go out and sell these big buyers against an established distributor like me, or maybe you are an established distributor, but you've got to have a program, you've got to have a plan, and you've got to have good collateral materials to look professional. You just can't go in with slipshod or acting like, well, let me just sell you something cheaper because it's just not, not going to work if you do that. And so I'm going to sign off. I want to thank you all for listening, and if anybody's got any questions, it'd be fine. And I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Don. Uh, there are no questions at the moment, um, but you guys have Don's contact information there and also mine. Uh, it's rocio at sagni.org. Um, I also want to thank everyone for joining us during your lunch hour. I hope um, you got a lot of information here that Don shared with us. Don, thank you again for joining us, and I hope everyone has a happy holiday season.